Okay, so now let's do something uh, more interesting with magma and frost this time. But since you know frost is getting stuff based on the PRT loader that we can see here, we're gonna put our magma modifiers on this. So I'm gonna open up the data viewer. Hit update here, see what happens. So here uh, in the rows we have the particles and in the columns we have the data channels. And you see right now we don't have too many data channels, we have um, position and velocity, then we have color, but we also have a uh, droplet. So now droplet is a um, channel that is written uh, from Naiad. Let me sort this, you can see uh, it's like uh, minus 100 here and then it goes a bit above zero here. So uh, what Ned is writing into this channel is the uh, position of the particle relative to the liquid. So when it is uh, below, it is when it is like a zero or below zero negative, then it um, the particle is inside the liquid, and when it is above zero, the particle is outside the liquid. It's a do it's a droplet, you know, it's flying through the air. So what you can do is that you can separate uh, the particles that are flying and you can just render them as um, particles in Krakatoa, you know, and, and, not as, uh, uh, and not send them to mesh. So just render them as a foam or in any other way separate them. So um, let's do this now. And I'm going to add another magnet modifier. And it's obvious, uh, you know, what is going to happen. So um, I'm going to use uh, the selection uh, channel in Krakatoa. So um, the way it works is that it creates another channel on each particle, which is called selection. And uh, then you have a Krakatoa delete modifier, which can uh, delete based on the value in that uh, selection channel. So let's hit control up. O for output, and then let's find the selection channel. There it is. Okay, so I'm gonna write in the selection channel, and then I'm gonna um, get the droplet. So should be obviously it's like the more common channel density. But you see here, I have set the filters. These are like filters of the channel list because channels can get quite uh, big. So I have filtered it to my channels only, and I can get you know, pick from a smaller list. So I get have the droplet here. So what I need to do is I need to compare it to something. So I can go to L for logic, and I can say um, greater. So in our case, if it is greater than something, we need to write uh, into the selection channel. So um, this something I'm gonna get a float with i and f shortcuts. So let's let's put this one to zero. That's gonna be our droplet threshold, and I'm gonna expose it. Alright, that's the fit here. Okay, let's say droplet cutout, uh, and then if it is greater than the droplet cutout, I want to send uh, one in the selection channel, otherwise I'm I want to send zero. So let's see, let's get here a switch. The way this works in the is we switch, so I hit L for logic again, otherwise I have to go here. Logic, and you see here I have a switch. So, now, there's more elements with West Lewis, but I think this will be very straightforward and you know, self descriptive. So, L and switch. So, if it's greater, which I'm gonna set the boolean, so if it's greater, I'm gonna send um, again IF, and then if it's greater, I'm gonna send 1 into the selection channel. And if not, 
going to send here. Okay. So let's just so this new selection here. And I have the selection already. So then I can put in on the top uh, the dot delete. And immediately you see some of the particles here just vanished. So let's uh, let's try, for example, lowering it down even more. So putting it to minus 10 is gonna give me the like more core of the liquid. So uh, you see this is uh, quite nice because you can uh, pretty much isolate parts of the liquid based on you know how um, how close it is to the, to the center, like how much liquid is. So uh, you can isolate the thinner and the thicker parts pretty much of the liquid. And another cool thing would be to just um, be able to invert it, you know, to see where the other stuff is. Um, let's see. How can we do this? I think you can, I think I saw the tutorial by Bo about um, exposing a checkbox, but um, since I, yeah, I haven't seen it yet, so I, I'm gonna just um, gonna say multiply. I'm gonna get this. By the way, instead of uh, one, I'm gonna write, as you know, I'm gonna write minus one here. So then. Then I'm gonna be able to like expose this one and I'm gonna call it um, uh, invert. I know it's not like a very pretty solution, but still. So let's see if I set this to zero, drop it value, then like when invert is minus one, I can I'm gonna get only the droplet, and when it is 1, I'm going to get only the core of the liquid. And you know, if I drop down this, it becomes even more of this. And this can be done with a checkbox. Just need to check. Both there. And okay, so if I now go uh, hide that to the PRP and go into Frost. You're gonna see that I can use this now to um, control my Frost. So it's gonna respond if I say zero. Yeah. I'm going to get mesh on more particles. If I get minus 3, I'm going to get a tighter mesh on like a more central part of the particles. Um, this is cool because it can, in a, in a very splashy situation, it can, it can allow you to you know, put uh, your mesh at the best positions uh, possible. So you can really you know, focus on the uh, the best stuff. So yeah, as you can see, just scratching the surface, very cool things are possible with magma and frost.